perfect specimen of a brook trail. Let's let her go. What if I was to tell you that I found a place where you can catch wild eastern brook trout on fly that's a drive-to location? Well, it's true. We're here just outside of Wawa, Ontario at Airedale Lodge, and we are on the hunt for big brook trout. Check it out. This wild big fish adventure starts right now on the new Fly Fisher. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new fly fisher is made possible in partnership with Algoma Country, Destination Ontario, Orbis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, WeatherTech Canada. This is Airedale Hunting and Fishing. Welcome. Airedale is an accessible drive-to multi-service outfitter located in Algoma Country, Ontario, near the town of Wawa. Consisting of 18 outpost do-it-yourself camps that are accessible by float plane and a main lodge located on Whitefish Lake of the Michipicotten River, these waters offer an incredible walleye, northern pike, smallmouth bass, lake trout, whitefish, perch, and brook trout fishing in northern Ontario. We're here for the brookies. Algoma country in Northern Ontario consists of countless opportunities for multi-level adventures for multi-species. Whether you're looking to fish lakes, rivers, small streams, or the Great Lakes, Algoma has you covered. The brook trout fishing in the area is incredible with opportunities to catch and release big fish in many of the area's water bodies. Upon our arrival, we get acquainted with our guide for our visit, Dean Domich. Dean is a local guide with a lifetime of experience in the area's water. He's a trapper as well as an angler and is extremely well versed on the area, the water, and the fish. We're in good hands. It's the beginning of July and the summer is long coming. The weather has been unseasonably cool and the water has been high. Not ideal conditions for brook trout. Upon walking down on this fantastic new creek, one I've never even seen before, there's a great riffle that runs into a pool. It looks like a plunge pool from here. So I switched immediately from the woolly bugger to a topwater dry fly, an ant. Um, We've missed the mayfly hatch by about a week and a half, and um, hopefully these trout are looking up. The thing with fishing big terrestrials for brook trout is that they will often hit your offering right away. The big idea. So, I've got this ant Chernobyl ant on to begin with, looking for aggressive feeders. Fish that are looking up, that are looking for some protein. And I'm throwing it across the current and letting it slowly swing across, creating a V-wake behind the bug. So if I pass through, looking for aggressive fish and none come up to eat from the surface, then what I'll do is I'll start slowing down and paring down until I actually have to put a nymph un under an indicator if, if needed, but I'm hoping that that's not gonna be the case here. Big terrestrials generally entice aggressive eats. If your bug does not get eaten quickly, consider paring down. I couldn't move a fish, so it's time to switch. Well, that was worth a shot. 
Now, we're gonna move to a black leech pattern and do the exact same thing all over again. Now I'm to the point where I'm starting to do different retrieves. So, try different retrieves like short strips like this, pumping strips, long, slow, steady retrieves, and a fallback. There's gotta be fish here. How do they want it? That's part of the puzzle. The other thing that I'm doing to help get the movement on this fly is in my cast. I'm actually doing a reach cast or an aerial mend when I cast. So before the fly actually hits the water, I do a big sweep to the left with my fly rod, and that actually puts the line across the current so that the current can effectively swing that fly through as opposed to just being it straight down, straight down the, um, the chute. So straight out and a reach cast. We move upstream and things get tighter and a little more sporty. Well, one hiding right under that rock right in front of you. Oh, <laughs> yep, flippy floppy. Well, we know the fly works. Yep. It's got to put it in front of a, a good one. Yes. One that'll grab a hold of that thing and run. Here he comes. Got him. <laughs> Sight fishing brook trout. How do you like that? <laughs> uh -huh. Takes you back to when you were a kid, huh? Oh, yes. How do you like that? Every single one is a jewel of the north. They're absolutely fantastic, fantastic fish. And they're floppy. You'll just go and sulk for a while. <laughs> Let's see if there's some bigger ones in here. Man, that's fun. Sight casting for brook trout in a log jam. There it is. Ah, oh, <laughs> he's picking on them little guys again, eh? Little guys. Aha. Nice looking fish from here though. What's really fun about this is that this water is so crystal clear. You can actually see these fish coming in and eating your flies, which is a lot of fun. And it's interesting to see their behavior too as they, as they come up and they look and they bump it and they, they check you out and they check it out. And, and I've said it once and I'll say it a thousand times. It doesn't matter the size of brook trout. They're fantastic fish to catch on fly and even better to let go. Brook trout are generally an all or nothing fish, meaning they can be very easy to convince to eat a fly or they can have lockjaw and you can't write a check big enough to buy a bite. That's what makes them so much fun and so fascinating to target on fly. In rivers, you can expect to find brook trout relating to structure, boulders, sweepers, back eddies, hydro cushions in front of rocks, springs, and tributaries are all likely spots for fish to hang out. But what do brook trout eat? Good question. A big brook trout gets big because of predation. Big protein meals are vital for these cold water fish and brook trout will eat almost anything they can fit in their mouths, including mice and voles, bait fish, frogs and other amphibians, a variety of insects in all stages of development, as well as other sport fish. Often, other than northern pike, brook trout are the apex predator in the system. So, what are some of the best flies to have in your arsenal when hunting for brook trout in rivers? Subsurface flies you should definitely have in your kit include Zoo Cougar, Kelly Gallup's pattern in tan, olive, yellow, or black can be absolutely killer for big brook trout. It emulates that large protein brookies are looking for without having to expend too much energy. Zonkers, white and black zonkers, smaller flies but equally effective bait fish patterns looking much like smelt or shiners. Muddler minnows, 
A variety of colors and sizes of this legendary brook trout fly is a staple in all boxes. Designed to mimic bait fish like sculpin, trout go crazy for a muddler minnow. Scotty's McFly. This smallmouth bass design pattern is a wonderful pattern designed for bass but has a great effect on multi-species. Brook trout will often go crazy for this pattern. Woolly bugger. Natural or organic colors make the woolly bugger arguably the most effective fly for brook trout fishing, mimicking so many possible natural food sources such as leeches, bait fish, crayfish, large nymphs, woolly buggers are a definite fly for brook trout. Today we're fishing a creek a short drive from Airedale Lodge. High, bright sun and cooler temperatures tell me it's time to slow things down big time. What I'm doing here at the base of this waterfall is taking a couple things into consideration. Number one is that we've got high sun. It's just about noon time uh, and these fish are gonna be deep. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm casting a bomb out there and I'm letting it sink. I'm letting it go down 30 seconds a minute and then I'm slowly crawling it back to me. Um, hopefully that as soon as that woolly bugger, that egg sucking leech starts moving, that'll trigger those fish to suck it up. They're not gonna expend a lot of energy when it's hot outside like this today to chase down, let's say, um, a streamer pattern or something like that. So low and slow, and uh, we'll see what happens. Let it sink, let it go down, and then just on the retrieve, oh, it's a good brookie. It's a good one, right at the base of this waterfall. Brookie in the hole, guys, woo! Now, we had some fun this morning with a couple of small brook trout in a really crystal clear lake up in something called this log jam. We come to the outflow of this waterfall. Here's what I caught it on, a red-headed egg-sucking leech uh, in olive color. That did the trick. Now, let's take a look at this brook trout. The, um, the cool thing about these fish is, and, and you know, we were up looking down from on high up these pools to see if we could spot any cruisers, but we really couldn't. And the reason why is because if you look at their back, they've got this crazy maze modeling that is um, total camouflage. So when you're looking from up high, let's say you're an osprey or an eagle, it's very, very difficult to see these fish. Now, one of the giveaways for brook trout, of course, being a member of the char family, is that white leading edge on their pectoral fin and their anal fins. So, you know what, when their fins are tucked in, they're basically uh, concealed, but as soon as those fins come out, as you can see that white leading edge, it's like a beacon for birds of prey. They're amazing fish. They're just, I mean, just the most beautiful freshwater fish in my opinion. Now that is what you come to Airedale Lodge for. Just perfect specimen of a brook trout. Let's let her go. I'll tell you what, I could do that all day long. Airedale Lodge is a family-run, family-friendly outfitter with access to multi-species as well as a variety of service levels to suit most anyone's budget. The main lodge is rustically comfortable with Wi-Fi, satellite television, a bar, and excellent meals for those who choose the American plan. The lodge has 11 private cabins on its premises as well as two suites located in the main lodge. There are one, two, and three bedroom cabins available and can accommodate two to 12 people. Each of the cabins boasts a screened in porch, private bathroom, hot and cold running water, heat, electricity, bedding, and linen and towels. This day we're joined by Dean's wife, Ghislaine. 
She's extremely well versed in the northern bush as well as an avid hunter, angler, and trapper. We load up and hit Whitewater Lake in search of a hike to back high country lake for wild pond brook trout on fly. Unfortunately, I dropped my net somewhere along the trail and didn't notice. Well, after a short hike through virgin forest, we have come across this fantastic little lake. This lake used to be on Ghislaine and Dean's trap line, so they know the area very well. And they're telling me that it's full of really, really healthy brook trout. So, five weight rod, sink tip line, and a cone-headed olive woolly bugger. Let's see what we can do. Oh, see the one jump right out of the water right there? Didn't see it. Yeah, he jumped right out. About a pound and a half. -er. Ready? One, two, six, go. Oh. Okay, just uh, I'll get settled up there. You can we'll get ready to cast. Already? Yeah, right now. Right away, we see a brookie surface and place a cast in the general area. So what I'm gonna do here is I've got a sinking line on. And I'm, and I'm gonna let it, just let it drop a bit. Now these fish are gonna tell me the way they want the retrieve to be. It'll either be short jerk pauses, with pauses in between, or long strips. There's a fish right away, first cast. How do you like that? <laughs> I ain't helping you with a net either. No, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just hand bomb them. Actually, that net, if you really need it, it's right behind you, but... Uh... That's a good fish. You know what, I will net this fish. <laughs> And that's a small one. He's dark. Here we go. First brook trout of the day. First cast of the day. There he goes. He's away. Well, looks good. Haha. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's go where we're gonna get some big ones. Where do you begin to find fish in backcountry lakes? First, the internet is your friend. With map technology today, you can see things like inflows and outflows, submerged structure, and even humps, saddles, and shoals, all from the comfort of your living room. Fish will be relating to structure for both safety and ease of predation. Weed beds, beaver lodges, felled trees, and if you're lucky and can find springs feeding the lake, start there to locate brook trout. They love the cool water springs bring. <laughs> second guy, second fish. Oh, are you, are you gone? No, you still got him. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh, that's a better fish too. So you know what? It pays to put in a little effort for adventure when you're here at Airedale Lodge. Okay, now, so when you're fishing from a canoe and you've got close quarter combat with brook trout or any fish for that matter, always keep in mind that the tip of your rod is where the most stress is on your rod. Generally with bigger fish, you like to fight them with the butt of your rod. But to get these fish in close, you need to fight them off the tip. And that's where you can get into some serious trouble, especially in a remote location where you might actually break a tip. So what I like to do is bring them in as close as you can without as much stress on your tip as possible and grab the leader and then let go of your line in your reel hand. So just like that, now all the stress is off the tip of the rod. I can place the rod behind me where it's safe and then properly ha hand line this fish. <sighs> second cast, second fish. Very decent brook trout. Tons of fun. All right, let's get him unbuttoned and then we'll let him go. Bye, buddy. Where he goes. Amazing. Pass it out, let it sink down, probably give it a 20 second count, and then start the retrieve. And if we start seeing some fish coming on top, I've got some 
uh, mice patterns. I've got some ant patterns. I brought some bass poppers to see if we can give that a shot. I mean, when you've got an opportunity to live like this to fish unpressured waters, you take every opportunity to try to catch them in as many different ways as you can. There's a fish. <laughs> Ooh, another strong one. Eh? Yeah, yeah, these ones are great. Oh, it looks like a nice male or something. Eh? They've got good colors on them. There we go. Oh, a nice little male hook jaw. Yeah, good fish. Now these are all wild fish, which is great. So it's natural reproduction, total natural reproduction in here. And away it goes, just like that. <laughs> that, that's probably a good one. I'll try to back up a little. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was interesting. You, you see where you tied your line on? Well, what ha yeah, it, right what happened there you was went that, for that on this on this sinking line, right here actually, on this sink tip, right here is where it goes from black to white. Yeah. And this trout actually came up and tried to eat the transition between black and white. Doubled back down, saw the fly, <laughs> the fly. So far out of the fish we've caught this morning, this one is the big one. Took some line, went for a run. Let's see if we can take a look at him. Oh yeah, good fish. So Dean was just saying that the reason why these fish do get so big is because number one, there's not a lot of pressure in here. And number two, ooh, that's a chunky, chunky brook trout. And number two, the fish that are caught that are of this size are let go. Locals definitely do know the value of big trout and their reproductive value in a system like this. Let's get them, give them a breath, get some pictures and we'll let them go. Gotta love it when you catch the big one of the day, first thing in the morning, right away. It's fantastic. Oh, this is great. This is so much fun. I haven't seen anything surface yet. That's why I'm hesitant to switch flies to a terrestrial. So do these fish cruise around the circumference of the lake, mm -hmm. Dean, or are they sort of stick in one spot? And... No, they cruise around on this lake. And what's the main forage? What are they eating here? Bugs or yep, there, is well, there fish in, in here? In here, there's freshwater shrimp. Scuds. You got freshwater shrimp and the, there's like, a fish. This time of year, it's a lot of dragonfly mimps. Right. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Brook trout at eight inches are just as much fun as brook I think he's a little bigger than eight brook inches. Brook trout five pounds. <laughs> this is a five weight rod. And you're fighting like crazy. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> glad I've got it. I was going to bring my six, but it is sporty on a five, that's for sure. This here's the kind of brook shirt that they actually make stickers out of. <laughs> the colors on it are fantastic. So this is what an olive woolly bugger looks like after five or seven brook shirt. You think brook shirt don't have teeth? Time to retire this bad boy. The equipment that we're using here at Airedale Lodge for brook trout is really quite simple. I've got a nine foot five weight fly rod paired with a, um, a fly reel that is just big enough that will hold your fly line. Really, it's just a vessel to hold your line. Um, the leader material is a nine foot three X leader. Um, now this line is a uh, 15 foot streamer tip, so the tip does sink. Um, and I also brought another reel with a floating line on it for the river and for any dry fly applications that we may have here. So it's that simple. When you come to Airedale, five weight rod, get ready to do battle with these fantastic wild brook trout. Oh, that's a good fish. <laughs> you can tell right away. Yep, I think so. Oh, it's a great fish. Hooked right in, the, right in the tip of the nose. 
Yeah, they're generally good for a run or two once they see the boat, but they like to dog you down. Those head shakes are unmistakable. Nothing quite like the feeling of getting a good, a good brook trout in the net. <laughs> the pressure is off at this point. Now, I'm gonna unbutton them. Now, this is a male. The reason you can tell is because it's got a kipe on its jaw already, and the nose is indented a little bit to allow that kipe to sit up inside. Ooh, look, he barfed up up a minnow. You talk about matching the hatch. Oftentimes, color isn't as important as size. And this brook trout has given us a fantastic clue as to what these fish are eating in the wild. Look at the size of the woolly bugger. Look at the size of the bait fish that it just threw up. If you take those indicators that Mother Nature gives you, it'll up your chances at catching big brook trout. How do you like that? Oh, oh that's a nice picture. That's a good fish. One of the things that you really need to keep in mind while fishing out of a canoe is not to overpower your casting. And what I mean by that is though you're sitting down, you're lower to the water, you still need to let your rod do the work. I've noticed that I've had a tendency to throw a lot of tailing loops while sitting low in a canoe. The reason why I'm doing that is I'm not letting the rod do the work for me. I'm trying to overpower the rod. So what I'm doing is I'm leaving my thumb on the very top of the reel seat, on the top of the cork, and I'm actually driving with my thumb as opposed to using my arm to make this cast. Now, by using the arm, I'm forcing the cast. By driving my thumb, I'm actually making the rod flex, and the rod is doing all the work for me. There he is. <laughs> there are no micro trout here, I'll tell you that. <laughs> now, I'm not gonna ever say the name of this lake. And What's the, the reason, name of it anyway? Huh? I don't even know the name of it. Well, not only do you not only know the name, but it's hard as anything to get to at times. <laughs> it takes a guide to get here. So when you come to Airedale, guides such as Dean are happy to take you out and show you what they found in a lifetime, there he goes, in a lifetime of learning. People in the north live off the land. They trap, they hunt, they fish. And why not use that knowledge to have a fishing trip of an absolute lifetime? Well, that about does it for this episode of The New Fly Fisher. Thanks for watching. I want to thank everybody at Airedale Lodge for their hospitality, great food, and of course, fantastic brook shrimp fishing. Remember, adventure is out there. All you have to do is go and find it, and what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand. For everybody at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching, and hopefully, we'll see you in the backcountry. The New Fly Fisher is made possible in partnership with Algoma Country, Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, WeatherTech Canada.